welcome, welcome, welcome to Dope Check episode 33. The boys are back from Riyadh, we're back from Saudi, and our first off-season Dope Check for so far. This is basically an emergency one. Bunch of news came out, Roster Mania news. We got Scrap, we got Sid, we got blow-ups, we got all the things we talked about, unexpected news. Here with me, as always, the two handsome fellas to my left on the screen now, Tactical Rab and Trey Zero. Let's keep it traditional. Rab, how are we feeling today? I'm absolutely fantastic. I just come back from the golf course and I popped in my first ever birdie. Bang. Feeling different today. Moving different. Uh, here to talk Vostermania. I mean, you know my eyes are lighting up this time of year. I'm not going to lie. I was surprised. It was a little bit slow after EWC, but it all makes sense. Some of the contracts got extended through the World Cup and now it's the end of August. All breaking loose and... Um, we got demonetized again, so sensational for me. What's good, Trey? <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds good. Trey, how you feeling? Nice to know my money diminishes in front of me every single time. Um, <laughs> and nine times out of ten, I am the root cause of that, so apologies. Um, <laughs> listen, I'm doing great. I'm tired as f I've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> We're so bad at this, Trey. We're so bad at this. All good. <laughs> First two minutes in, we've been demonetized. They, 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 my fault again. <laughs> the boys just cooking. No, the, the boys just cooking everything right now. It used to be me, now it's no. them, man. Come on now. I'm great. Uh, I'm great. I'm very tired today. Um, but you know, show Black Ops Six beta, couple Red Bulls. Hopefully, we're locked in. Uh, I'm doing a tattoo world tour right now. I got tattoos booked like every single week for the next like month just to get my body finished ready ready and sort of ready for the new season i'm enjoying it man this is the best time for uh you know off season you got people traveling this is the best time to do whatever the, do whatever you want you got rabbit and birdies you got me getting drawn on by people and you got ace who is buying all the stocks in the market so actually going to buy a house in kansas city in a bit here no lie but uh, now you're buying houses <laughs> doing, doing the big things but we got things to talk about. Let's hop into it. First off, starting off, we got, of course, the king, bang, coming back <laughs> as always, winning esports personality of the year. Let's peep the video. Let's watch him accept it and hear the speech a little bit. Um, but super exciting stuff for Optic, for Scump, and you know, pretty much the whole COD scene. Seeing him take this. And the esports personality of the year is. Skump! Yeah, that's right, Skump! Get over here, what? buddy! I know he's on the other side of the venue, but we're gonna be bringing him up here, and this man is gonna be so hyped. I know how hard he's been working. He's been grinding the watch parties. Everybody's been cheering him on all year long, and tonight he crushed it in his first ever time as a host. Wow! Thank you so very much to the Esports Awards, to my community. I have to give a huge, huge shout out to my wife, my mom, uh, all of my family that supports me throughout this crazy, crazy adventure that I've been through. Recently retiring was a huge jump for me, and the watch party and everything that we've done since then has truly been uh, an absolute blessing. So thank you to my community as well. Thank you so much to Optic. Uh, everyone that works at Optic from the ground up, I mean, seriously, they are family to me as well, and they make my life so much easier. Show. And it wouldn't be right if I didn't give a big shout out to my man Hector as well, my ultimate mentor throughout this crazy journey that I've been through. Thank you very much. Green wall forever, and thank you guys very much for the award. The king has spoken. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of this, of him winning the Esports Personality of the Year. He had huge numbers, done great things. Um, Rab, Trey, what do we think about Scump taking, taking this award? I mean, he was there. This is the thing. I think Courage even mentioned this before, that, like, he was going to win something, but then he wasn't going to go. So they were like, all right, we ain't giving it to you. We'll give it to someone else. Um, but no, I thought it was a cool day for COD, really. The fact that, obviously, it's interesting that they're hosting it out there in Riyadh for the next few years. But the fact that we had Puckett hosting it, Scump and Hex hosting it, was a pretty good showing for like the personalities that COD produces. In some ways, it might not be the best esport, but we definitely have the best people. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you can debate on whether Scump should have won it or not, whatever. I think it's, it's always deserved. I mean, he's the king. Like, you know, what can you say? Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, COD has the best community of any esport of all time. All right, we ain't got no, we ain't got no, we got weird people, but we ain't got you know, we ain't got League of Legends weird. <laughs> Damn, just we threw haven't the, got threw the, we, 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 game we, under the bus right there. Just slammed. We ain't it. got, <laughs> we ain't got Valorant weird. We got yeah, COD weird, and that's a, that, 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 that's a cool weird. We ain't got none of that weird weird. You know what I'm saying? So it's nice yeah. to uh, you know, nice to see a, a skunk win it. I mean, he's been around for, you know, let's just put it this way. Without him, COD would be in the fucking dirt as, as it is. Um, and even though he retired, he's still, like, doing a lot for COD. So it's nice to see. I mean, he's, yeah, he's been doing massive things. His watch party gets, you know, more than the actual stream. I'm sure COD, whenever they try to sell their broadcast stuff, use his stream included in the numbers. So, yeah, he's doing massive things. It's great to see this happen. Um and yeah, I hope Scum keeps doing it for years to come and keeps bringing eyes back, eyes over to the game. Um, There's one other thing I just threw it in our um, like personal chat okay, well, on that. our uh, season video we got coming up. It's the end of the year. You guys know what that means. You probably watched last year's one. Season recap review video. We got a little teaser trailer here for the boys uh, just to show you what we're cooking up on the content side right now. Absolutely. So, let's take, um, a, let's take a peep. Yeah, just take a look at this. I have a lot of pressure of like, I want to I want to make my fans happy. I want to make my family happy. If you want to get to the top, you got to be ready to sacrifice it all. I will do a lot of stuff to win. I'm just like trying to fucking win. Granted, we're not perfect. We're human. We're definitely going to have bad days. There's a lot of good teams in this league and to win consistently takes not only a lot of skill, but a lot of luck. The competition is at an all time high, folks. Anything can happen. It's going to be a difficult road. If you're not prepared for that, then you're not going to make it to the top. Oh, over here, shit stains. We're God, literally we not to listening to call outs. We're not registering what the fuck's being said. You blacked out. We were winning because yeah. I told you we need to get 10 seconds so that we're winning. When they won that map too, I was just telling them, like, remember that face? Like, all of them that are so happy, look how happy they are. They, they think they won, like. It's Call of Duty. The guys are battling. Best players in the world. There's a lot of trash talking. When you're on this stage in a moment like this, it is a different environment. It levels up. The electricity flows through you. The brighter the lights, like I always play better. Like I always rise to the pressure. There's always pressure, so I, I, don't, I don't really feel like too crazy on it, but there's always pressure on this. Seconds basically last. Number two is never acceptable in any fucking situation, just period. Never, not once, will I be okay with second place or any third place. We need first place finishes. That's fire. That 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 looks heat. I'm not going to lie to you. That uh, The fact that it also encapsulates at, so every team, we saw so many faces in there, people people, people want to hear from. We saw Ghosty, Lamar, Attach, a Hector, everyone. Shout out Breaking Point. That's a W all the way around. No lie. Chat, what do we think? Do we think it's good or bad? You guys got to say it. going to be fire, baby. Stay tuned. Stay we back, tuned. baby. Incredible Coming fire. Soon. Let's go. Let's go, chat. Um, Didn't see any Carolina in there like that. That's <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> That's a good point. Let's pretend they didn't exist. Did we see much Boston either? They get so, you know what? We saw Clayster, but we saw yeah, no, Clay was in there. We saw no Boston, no smidgen of Boston. So I will say. I'm hoping we're boycotting Boston this year. That would be fantastic. <laughs> well, uh, well, are they... I don't know what's going on with them. Well, there's interesting stories on them, really, as to whether they're even going to be here or not. I'm pretty sure, I don't know, if someone comes in and says, look, we want to buy your spot and they're paying a bag, I'm pretty sure Boston will go. Because today, Oxygen Esports, which is like the other brand, they just disappeared for Valorant. They just dropped their whole Valorant team, ceasing operations. Today? So, yeah, last night. Oh, shit. They just, they just shut down their Valorant project yesterday. So... I don't know if that means anything, but you've got to think it means something. Okay. I mean, Hopefully, that's... I, I think we will gas them up too much. Maybe they were just a bad business. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Oxygen Esports. Does it say here? Valorant. Oh, yeah. The I think it's... community? No, nice try. I don't know if they it. actually tweeted about it, but because I don't think they tweeted, which is interesting. All of their players tweeted free agent. Interesting, okay. Um, um, but, yeah, let's so... talk about Beyond Valorant. We're, hey, this is a COD show, man. For now, this is a COD show. It might turn to an eSports show eventually, but for now, COD, we had the beauty of Black Ops 6, COD Next. We got a chance to see a little bit more in depth about the game, had pros, streamers, Warzone people, everyone there. Um, and Rab, thankfully, clipped this of Shotzi talking about um, 
the Omni movement and the game itself. So let's take a peek. What the problem? I love, I, I love, I love Reb getting the getting the fire clips from the event. Out of all, out of the entire event, Rab got the bangers. Got the bangers. Nah, that, that's what the problem. Not even trolling chat. The aim assist did not feel that strong. So that's so good. I'm being so dead, dead serious, bro. It doesn't feel strong at all. Like, there's an actual skill gap, finally. That's probably dead as well. Are we back? Basically, my question for the boys, I'm going to start with Trey, because this is obviously played some betas before, obviously, played a bunch of CODs, said, everyone said a lot of things early in game cycles. Uh, do we think, from watching the clip, or at least what we see here, that Black Ops is, is going to be the next best thing? Or do you think it's early hype just from playing a new game? Same shit every year. Uh, I got... I struggle to have gas for COD. It's just the same thing every single year. I I even saw a clip from... um. Let me try and find it real quick. Oh, it had me crying. Because this is what we're going to be seeing. Um, Theoretically. Um, This is what we're going to be watching in third person. I don't know if you guys saw it. It was a clip that uh, Cheen quote tweeted. Um, Cheen? Okay. It's, it, it looks like we're playing like Just Cause 2 or like some fucking max pain shit or something like this but just looking at this in third person like i don't know if I, if you want me to be ruby i'm not excited for it i linked it in the discord by the way i think, I think um, if it's the quote tweet from gino yeah, you muted you muted you muted because you have m as your mute button <laughs> this guy bro there you go my bad uh, <laughs> i put it in the i put it in the discord like the actual video that i want you to watch okay okay bro. I yeah, mean, but yeah, go on, Trey. Does it look good? Yeah, it looks like Cold War to me. Am I excited? Mm. I'm, I'm really losing the excitement for COD. I'm more excited to watch, to play, to play the campaign of it. I think that'd be cool. But if you look at this in third person, just tell me this doesn't look fucking insane. <laughs> I mean, that's someone said it looks like damn. The new Gears of War's looking good. We're sliding backwards. <laughs> Bro. The backward slide, I think, might be the most insane thing because, like, when you slide normally, your character model goes to like half the height of normal, right? But is this the not backward insane slide, to you? yeah, <laughs> that backward slide is insane. I think because well, you go from being like your heads up here to your heads literally on the floor immediately with the backward slide, and you can shoot while you backward slide. Like, this I think it's pretty like, crazy. Uh, uh, People are about like... to get turned on absurdly this if this if this stays in the game which us we're told it even is even cell got shit on i'm pretty sure there's a clip yeah yeah we have somewhere. the clip coming up in here but like i'm just saying like like the way this looks it just it's 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 getting ready for people to get absolutely farm shit on like turned around like straight sp sp spun around spat on basically i don't know i'm i you do guys, get you I think guys, it's gonna uh, be fine everyone, Personally, everyone in the chat everyone in chat's fine. like it's great cod needed change like I mean, we've changed like everything. <laughs> we this is as close shit. to jetpacks though that we're like ever gonna get again. But That's don't we I change think. like, bro? We went from you know no slide into slide into dolphin dive into to double sprint. Everyone's like, ah, oh, cod needs to change. Cod needs this change. We change every fucking year. I mean, again, I like the idea of change, but how it's implemented, obviously, visually right now from that video and other ones we've seen, like the Celium clip we're gonna watch in a second just look like it's a little op already so maybe there's some nerfing and a little bit of you know game dynamics that we need to fix but let's watch this clip of scum talking about shots see how he's gonna be annoying oh, is it guaranteed 70? yeah because you have a game two weeks or yeah, slam it yeah. oh, oh my god oh my god, god. This shit oh, my god. Yeah. oh my god oh my god this guy's ham bro <laughs> oh, i want to watch that of course i dive yeah, kill again two weeks or a dive kill is forever oh <laughs> Jeez. Like, yeah, no. That like, must look insane for the other guy's perspective. Like, the I'm, net code has to be so good. I'm happy for... Uh, for me, personally, I've just lost a lot of love in COD in general. Like, I don't get excited when a new one comes out. I don't get excited to... You know, not like not like I was before. Last year, it was the same. Like, I'm more excited the fact that they've actually, you know, got actual map designers that haven't just reskinned 16 maps and called themselves a level designer. Um, 
and they've actually like made their own maps and stuff like that so i'm excited for that but you know for me i just don't I've, i don't get excited for cods anymore but hopefully this one changed my opinion when i play it but you know we'll have to see does it change your opinion though that ranked play is coming out in season one of this game does that make you a little bit excited does that tickle your pickle just a little bit trey if it's the exact same rank play as this one, no. This rank play sucks. I mean, it's a different developer. I mean, Treyarch... Treyarch... No, it's not. Treyarch, Treyarch do the rank play for this game, too. They did? They do the rank play for this one, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sheesh, man. Okay, but still. I mean, I'm, I am excited for this to come out. I do... I'm an embracer of things new. I've been calling for jetpacks to come back. I'm a fan of the jetpacks, the wall running, the black, anything Black Ops 3 related, ban and protect, all the weird stuff. I'm about it all, honestly. But how crazy it's going to be, how broken it's going to be, that's yet to see. But if we get ranked play early, I think this is going to be a big, a big factor in streamers, pros, and everyone else actually streaming the game and like making it as big as possible that's what we want to see basically that's what i want to see for it, this game the only the only way this does well is if they stop the hackers which will never happen mm. yeah that, that is that's always a whole the topic thing. itself right you, i got I, I i i'm gonna say this right now i guarantee we run into a bunch of hackers in the beta today i promise you you think they've already got that shit locked and loaded they've already done it they already done it there's like literal videos from like people doing it like when it actually came out like before uh, what happened to the Call of Duty I love, man? The worst it used to be is you'd go back and play like Black Ops 1 six years later and there'd be someone with like a gold MP5 or something. Oh, right around no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, like, Rab, you're, 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 you're spewing right now. Because in COD 4, there used to be people who were unkillable that could travel through the maps. Like literally. No, nah, like you know, yeah, yeah, like, you'd yeah, play yeah, listen, those Black listen, Ops 2 listen, lobbies with the mod menu would come up and shit. The mod menu was great though. Yeah. I either got D ranked or Prestige 10 level 55. There was no in between. Yeah, every time. Yeah. <laughs> and you, listen, that guy that had the mod menu felt like God. Right? Oh my he God, was, did he? Yeah. Oh, he, uh, he could have got his dick sucked in the lobby, I promise you. Yeah, I, he was calling in swarms. <laughs> yeah. like... He had people go out to him, please make me level 55, man. Please, please, please. <laughs> Ends up freezing his whole console and blows it up. <laughs> 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 oh, what a time. Yeah. Oh, the great yeah, times. That, we can't act like the hackers haven't been around for a long time. And actually, I mean, I'll say that before, they used to have a lot more control of things like that, like like exactly what we're talking about here, than the current ones. But it's bad. And I mean, other games of anti-cheat, the fact that we don't have it in ours is just absurd. Um, Snake no, we have it. We we don't have it to a proper degree, though. We have a we have COD's own one, which is why it's shit. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. Like it's... COD made their own anti cheat. They couldn't even make a good game before. You know what? Make a good anti cheat. That would be fucking good. That would be mint. Two month develop two month development cycle anti cheat. That's literally broken all the time. Snakey returns at Celium, boys. It's kind of it's kind of being like a line. Is is snaking slash selium back, boys? It, 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 that th that's those snakes looked hella fast. Maybe it's just the beta. Bro, this, this is literally Cold War on a different map. The whole like the way they move when they snake and it actually like does that. look a lot similar. It's, to cold, yeah. it's it even the cold Krig War. is the same gun and it's the same reflex sight or same red dot. It's literally it's cold, cold War. War. That actually does look identical to Cold War watching that too. Fair. But I don't mind it because it's like, whatever. The pros GA'd Snake in this year, they can do it again. But it still exists, but it always exists. So whatever. It always comes down to whether the pros were actually GA or not, to be honest. I pray for us in rank play, though. I do pr pray for us in the beta and rank play because this looks hella fast. Like, this looks like there's no break in between. It, I, it is just a beta, but like, there, it looks like there's none of the. Even the, the same as MW3, really, to be honest with you. MW3, we had, a, we had that little patch, remember, to like slow down what the second snake you did? We had that little yeah, patch. That doesn't, that, 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 that doesn't slow down the camera. That just slows down the. That just slows down what he sees, not what the other person sees. Yeah, this doesn't look like anything has slowed down for anyone. This looks like it's like rapid speed like it used to be. So, I mean, that, that's a little concerning about the game. A little bit concerning. Um, and here's another. This is the Omni Omnimoving clip. Another one. Yeah, no, this is just absurd, bro. Stand 
kills. I promise you, this is Fortnite. <laughs> yeah, bro, are we watching? Am I watching Carter's? Like hang on, hang on. Back that up. Back that up like five seconds. Did he just dolphin dive and cancel the dolphin dive midair? Am I seeing that correctly? Oh, no. He, he hits the wall. He hits the wall. Oh, I was going to say. I, I mean, th that could be calculated, though. You dolphin dive into something to, like, That was exactly what I was saying. Like, if, you, if you did that on purpose, though... You're literally breaking breaking camera animation, stopping, and then just piecing somebody. There's gonna be some like Naga Fen shit. You know the kill that he got on was it Clay back in Advanced Warfare on Detroit? When it comes out of like the back of green and then just somehow dolphin snakes around the corner. There's gonna be some crazy shit like that on this game. Cause as much as this is fire, the problem is what the other guy sees. Especially when lag starts to come into play. Um, I'm sorry, but this backward slide is like <laughs> the backward slide is, is insane. Does this not seem that like crazy. it's Actually, already I'm all for it's already open. I'm all for like I'm all for innovating, but this backward slide is insane. And you go so fast as well. Like look how quick he goes Bro, when he, he slides. He goes down the stairs. What they got on this map? Lube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's legit like a Black Ops four slide. Or like, it looks. You know I, mean? I mean, it looks worse than that. Also, because you're ju you're like you're sliding, you're in the air, you can do a ton of things, bro. Like this is everything that was wrong with Black Ops Four. The thing that pros obviously complained about was snaking, and then the slide canceling. This is slide canceling on crack with pot potential of <laughs> insane snakes and everything. This is yeah. Uh, this has a lot of game breaking mechanics. That's that's a little this, scary. This backward this backward slide is insane. They should GA Omni movement. I don't think there's a setting to turn it off. So no no no. This is how the game's gonna be. And um, we also have. This I mean, thing. I also wonder like whether they're gonna like is this just for this game or is because that's what they're talking about is how like this is the next generation of movement. You know, like it, is next year's COD gonna have it too? I don't know. We'll see. Beans, another another thought, another thing he puts out, 100 HP instead of 150. So it looks like this COD is also a 100 HP COD. Um, I, love how, I love how COD does a thousand things right, but then has to do like the three or four most vital parts of the game wrong. 100 HP COD. Trey, do, it, do L or W 100 HP CODs? I mean, I don't even know if it's the health of the issue or the guns, if the guns are OP, because it could be 100 HP, but the guns don't do as much damage. Also, I heard, also I saw a video that there's no headshot multiplier unless you use high caliber. There's none of it? Nope. He says here, uh, Bean says here, close to, this guy responds, close to the same TTK though, guns just deal less damage around the board instead of HP being lower. He says headshot multi is a thing. Should never have 100 HP with a headshot multiplier, causes some crazy kills. Yeah, it was from um, from one of those people that do like the stats and stuff like that. Headshot multiplier doesn't ex doesn't exist on SMGs or ARs unless high caliber is involved. Interesting. I feel like that's also like I don't know a little problematic that your headshots don't count for more. Just a separate thought. Now they should they should count a little uh, bit more, right? Depends. Depends. I'm honestly not opposed to having zero headshot multi. Yeah, I think, I think it should I don't be really that give a fuck about yeah. headshot multiplier if you. Because we just had to, we we have to deal with like people complaining about like headshot multiplayer. GGK is fine though, from what I've seen, but we'll we'll see in a couple hours what it's actually it's looking like. like. Sky's tweet, but there's no, you, you're lying. <laughs> hey, we've been cooked. Well, we're gonna get to Rostermania very shortly. Don't yeah, worry yeah. About Black that. Ops Six. We, there's obviously stuff to cover, but we haven't been live in a couple of weeks now, so give us a second, man. We're gonna get there. Don't worry. Um, here's a little Twitch clip from showing Shotzi's little, his match here. Hold on, hold on, Shan, hold on. I'm saying, love this game. Love the game. Wow. All threats neutralized. Honestly, dude, the Show best game we've had CDO yet. Probably see. Jesus. Bro, wait, 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 wait. The clips I, in wait, genuine show. question. Why don't you come back? Come back? Yeah. Tell me this shit's not lit. Tell me, bro, this is the best COD we've had CDL, 100%. Dude, I don't Dude, Ant is comedy, because the way he says it, you could tell he sits back and looks at the chat like he knows he's about to be clip farmed. 
He's the. I, I mean, I clipped the shirt, up, but who, who clipped this? Not say me. Clipped by GG Breakpoint, aka you on the Breaking Point yeah, account. That's me. A hundred percent. I mean, just the way he he looks at chat when he says it. Whether he, I mean, maybe he believes it. I'm not, I'm not doubting that he believes it. I'm more saying like he knows he's 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 clip farming here. What he's saying. So, from everything we see, guys, from everything we see so far, Rab will start with you. Then we'll go to Trey, and I'll give my uh, my closing thoughts on Black Ops Six. Do we think this has the potential, at least? You're going to play the beta today, so obviously our opinions are going to change by next week. Do we think it has the potential for everything we see to be the best COD, at least, of CDL era? I would say it's not got a very high bar to beat. <laughs> I think the reality is it should be the best COD of the CDL era. Mm. Like, if it's not, I think it's a miss. Because we've had Sledgehammer games... I mean, MW19, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Vanguard wasn't good. MW3 was probably better than we've had in a while. Cold War, I think most people would say, probably sets the standard for games in the CDL era, but that was a heavily rushed game from Treyarch. They were meant to release that a whole year later, but they had to bring it back because Vanguard wasn't ready. So they knew that game was rushed, um, but it was still pretty good. This game should be the best. Obviously, I have my concerns about how insane the movement might get when you've got two players who have been grinding the game for eight months who are coming up against each other and both have mastered absolutely everything about it. I think it might be a pretty insane experience to play. I think to watch, it's going to be fantastic. I'm really excited for it to watch. I think the players are going to have their complaints about it for sure. But I think to watch, it definitely should be the best game of the CDL era. Trey Zero. I ain't believe it. I ain't believe it. No one's opinion. I went to COD next. It's always the cheese, isn't it? They're at, they're at the COD event. They can say shit. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Shotzi ain't gonna stand up and walk out and go, ah, fuck this shit, game's ass. Listen, we say it every year, every year the game's great. Every year the game's great. This is the best card ever, this will be the great. We said about MW3, I saw multiple pros say about MW3 because they got the nostalgia back. Come to the end of the year, guess what? Game's fucking ass, game's shit, game's the worst card ever. You know? I'll believe it. Give it three months, then we'll decide. We'll give it three months and then we'll look at the team. We'll, we'll do the comparisons between people's opinions now and then three months in when they're on Twitter complaining about how the game shit, the movement shit, people are snaking, the things are OP, we got to change everything. I can't wait for those conversations, but I'm not going to lie. From all the CODs are in this era, this does look at, look at least the most fun and the potential in pubs even to have fun and just like, you know. If skill based matchmaker people. didn't exist, this would be an insanely fun pub game. That, exactly. But I fear right. it will exist, and therefore it will be fun for one map, and then you. Oh, can't these go. pub lobbies are going to be fucking horrible to play. They're going to be fun <laughs> for yeah, again one two maps, and then after that, once once I'm it brings you up, it's going to be hell. I'm in such a grouchy mood too. Like I might have an hour in me max. <laughs> one 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 back one backslide might be having me going out having a cigarette. I got one more clip I just threw. It. Just go on Crim Six's uh, Twitter, actually, Ace, because we kind of already seen this clip. He just snakes. Yeah. I yeah. just want to look at the one where Selene gets absolutely spat on. Here you go. Wait, is that the grandma like who gets the second clip? It's like this one, yeah. I don't know, but she came up to me last oh, contact and was like, was whoa, like whoa, 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 who was that? Who was that? Who was that? Whoa, what the fuck was that? Does that movement not look insane to you? Yeah, I've actually seen. Actually, wait, is that the grandma who get those sniping clips? I don't know, but she came up I don't even understand that. exactly how the other guy did what he did. <laughs> but the shots he was also saying, how in close quarter fights, you don't get as much aim assist. No, but like, so, he slides forward, he, and then dolphin dives back. backwards. You've muted your mic again because your M key is your fucking mute button. Listen, I said that I was, I actually was at the same time Jinx repeating what you were saying. I, we were literally saying the same thing. He slid forward and then jumped back and killed him, which is fucking crazy. Slid forward, dolphin dive backwards, and then probably backslid all down the tunnel. It's it, it, it's like a it's like a slide cancel on Mars. It's literally a slide cancel times ten. It's like you're going forward and changing directions instantly, not just breaking direction upwards. You're not just stopping and breaking. You're breaking forward. So aim assist is going this way and breaking backwards. So I don't know. They, I, again, the potential of game breaking mechanics in this is very clearly possible. That's that's what we're going to say here. Front, he went, said, uh, chat said front slide, back slide, and one motion is nuts. Went prone also as well. He did? 
Oh, he, yeah, yeah, that, like when he does this motion right here, right there, he cut it, and bro, and look how small the hitbox, like trying to shoot that from expecting him to be here and then to have to sh pick your gun up all the way to shoot that. I don't know. Looking a little, looking a little dicey. Looking a little dicey for Black Ops 6, everybody. Looking a little dicey. Check DM for another I give, I, mechanic. I, I give Shotzi like... One month before uh, he's just pissing everyone off, yeah. bro. Shotzi yeah, and one Hydra. Month might be a stretch. Uh, here we got a clip right here from PD Gaming. Thank you, brother. Let me not leak. There's also some other thing where you can like bring out your knife, so you can run with it, there which go. is interesting. All right, he said. Oh, we're talking. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, this is a feature of multi crazy. as well. He he just laughing. I mean, this it's got to be possible to turn this off, hasn't it? In competitive. You think? I think, that, I, I think yeah, that's great. I, although I'm kind and of I, down. Like, if, you, if you're if you able to do it, I think it probably should be on. The players won't want it. But, you know what I mean? I think that's great. Yeah, I think this is better than the, like, the whole assassination thing. I think this is way cooler. If you, if you get caught slipping... You got caught slipping, you know, like you got caught. <laughs> it is what it is. Now you have to pay the consequence of getting caught. I'm could, you imagine that in like one, could you imagine that in like 1v1 S&D just trolling him for like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. 1v1 I mean, S&D to, to, like... S to win the championship. You're just holding someone up as a meat shield. <laughs> someone like, all right, I'm last alive. The hard point I'm trying to break into. I hide in a corner. One of the guys runs out to take some space. Bring him as a meat shield, and then I just go into the hard point. So like holding one of their boys. This meat shield weird. only kind of works though if you can kill him at the same time, like because you know in public matches how like, um, like you don't do damage to your team. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that guy's gonna be in god mode. Yeah, it, I guess it. That's a good point actually, as to whether, because if it's team damage is on. The bullets will probably have some sort of penetration damage as well through the body. So it probably won't really... Like, you'll just sacrifice your team at that point, you know what I mean? You'll just gun yeah. him down and kill the guy, you know? It's, it's, it's for the plot. It's for the silly goose time. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> do what you gotta do to get the meat shield going. A tactical grandma getting cooked. And now, what everyone's been waiting for, what I've been waiting for... Boys, let's talk some roster moves. Let's talk roster mania. I think this is what... This is the meat and potatoes. We talked about the cherry on top we talk about the sprinkles let's talk about this full sunday right now we have a big a big thing that happened right pretty much right after uwc essentially like what is it within a week we have the announcement that vegas legion is now vegas falcons shocked surprised reactions trey rab i'm gonna start with trey just because this is cdl you know a cdl team that we've seen for a while what do you think about this? Do you think it's good, bad, that Vegas is now the Falcons team? Oh, it's 100% good. That is by far, it's top two worst league teams that have ever been in existence. Um, they came in, I think I think I saw a tweet on it, like, but they came in hoping for a cash grab, in my opinion, and it wasn't a cash grab they hoped for, and then you could just see by the amount of effort they put into the team, into the players and everything like that. It was just very lackluster. Um, I think Falcons taking off of it, like Falcons taking over, is good, just strictly because you know Falcons look like they care. The Saudi Arabians look like they give a fuck. Like there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of caring on that on that organization. Do I agree with you know them keeping the same players? Hey, they are they going to win with that team? No. Do I think it might potentially be the worst team in the league has ever seen? Potentially, yes. But it's them actually allowing themselves to give it a chance. You know, I said the same. I said the same with some other teams. If they prove me wrong, they prove me wrong. Do I see them getting a win in the league? As of what we saw at uh, uh, the EWC, I don't see it. I think a lot of teams are gonna like. I even think the Boston Breach team with Pentagram would beat this team. Um, Damn. But. That that's just that's just me being that's disrespect. Honest. <laughs> that's just me being honest. That's ultimate disrespect. Um, um, Rab, Rab, do you have anything about 
this Falcon. I mean, what I will say is they have the most fire logo in the whole league. Like, can we get yes. a close up on Vegas Falcons logo? Yeah, absolutely. Because everything about it is actually sensational. I like the color. We see the V, we see the F. The F almost looks like a claw as well. Do you know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, it does. And then nicely symmetrical, the Falcon thing at the top. I think that's fire. So they're already one up Legion on that. I mean, he took the Fleur de Lay and then they brought it to Vegas for some reason. So, yeah, I think the drama really is whether they should have put in this team of the Saudi boys. I like the idea. I'm surprised they did it personally, especially because they've also said that they're going to bring along an academy team full of other Saudi players into America. I thought they might have done it with these boys and fielded another team. But I think we've seen with teams like the Thieves and maybe with Gorillas on some extent this season, that if you form a team with good chemistry, with some talents in there, you can make it work. My debate is how quickly the patience on this might run out because we've seen over the last few days what Falcons are doing with their Counter-Strike team. They're signing Nico. They're paying like a million dollar buyout for him. They're signing him on a three-year deal. They're trying to sign like Monacy as well, apparently. So, and to be fair, they've tried this for some time, so it's no real secret. They're spending the bag and they obviously can if they want to do it in COD. They're not going to commit to it yet, but I wonder like if these guys are dead last with zero series wins by March, are they going to say, all right, it ain't worth our time. We'll send them down to our academy. Maybe we'll keep one or two on the starting team. And then we're going to start making some plays um, in that roster period. Because next season, obviously we're going to talk about scrap in those situations. But after this upcoming season there are going to be some big name players as free agents. And that's why Falcons might want to strike, especially because I don't think Falcons want to go to EWC next year and not be competitive, right? Kind of like they were competitive this year, but obviously, you know, still finished top 16. So yeah, I think I'm down for this. Like my perspective is that although I understand the frustrations for some of the challenges players in North America, although I think, you know, unlucky, this is how I want the league to be. I want to have representation from around the world. And I like the fact that we have a Spanish team. I like the fact that we have a Saudi team. I'd love at some point to be able to have like a fully French team. Um, I think that's the league that I want to have. So I'm, I'm fully on board. And these guys are not... There's clearly some talent there. We saw it at EWC. Yeah, I was gonna, I'm going to literally piggyback right off that last point you just made. We saw at EWC that they didn't get necessarily molly whopped in their series, even against FaZe. It didn't it didn't look like they were gonna win per se, but it didn't look like they were scrubs. It looked competitive throughout the throughout the maps. Um, that we saw personally, I think Khalid and uh, Khalid had some potential. He looked like a good player. He looked like he he was coordinated, his gun skill was good. So really I think from from this, what the result is gonna be is maybe one or two of them getting kind of put into the league, you know what I'm saying? Getting dispersed into the NA side of things. Um, the other ones, I don't know, but I, I think one year with them, similar to the Heretics experiment they did coming with their old team, they're going to run it for a little bit. If they do get dead last, let's say major one, major two next year. And like Trey said, they can't win a, a series against anybody. Um, I, in my head, at least I think their changes will come then. They might have, you know, they might bring someone else in then. They might swap someone. Some, we might see a new team by the end of the year, similarly like we saw with Heretics. Um, everyone wants to give their boys a chance, a fair shake at, at the game for a major or two. But after that, I don't think Team Falcons are one that want to be at the bottom of the pack. I don't think they want to be known as the worst team, losers, whatever it may be. Um, but I am a fan of, of them coming in and, you know, trying to bring in something new to the league, something fresh. I do feel bad. I for think that I was, I was going to say, I, I think they're just, you know, showing them some like credit for how long they've, you know, all right, we've got in the league now. We're going to give you guys a run. Exactly. Right. Exactly. I, I don't, I, I, I don't, I, I think they're doing it out of respect, like to the players, like, just like we got the spot. We're not going to kick you astray. We're going to let you guys try. And, you know, we all know they can just buy any player they want. If I'm an, if I'm an org in the league, I'm fucking licking my lips, hoping I've got a top player in there because you might be able to make a seven-figure deal. Absolutely. And I think after these guys are probably all signed yet to a year. And like Rav said, 
there's a lot there's a big market opening up hopefully soon hopefully in one year and that would be a perfect time for falcons to build an absolute super team but i was going to talk about this point even you know uh, the succeed tweet adds to it but i do feel bad for some of the challengers players and even some of the pros who now don't have a spot just because that legion team even though i don't think many of them were going to resign anyways it kind of sucks that yeah. No, no, I'm saying more or less like you now have two teams in the league, Heretics and now Falcons, that have no spot for anyone else. So, I mean, yeah, that's, positive, uh, that's negative. What the, that, that's what the EU scene feels every single fucking year. So it's just very NA biased at that point. Hmm. But, do the, but in the same time, it, it's a little more cheese when the guys are – when the guys are – haven't made their run through challengers per se if, if that makes sense right not particularly i mean eu's been getting shafted for many many years due to it being an na only league at that point the time the time that we get like eight spots or like something like that that's not american run it's it's unfair like respectfully like a lot of these challenger players had their point to prove at the ewc and just got fucking world starred so uh, didn't Falcon say they're making a challengers team? Uh, PD, they did, but it's going to be uh, a Saudi team. The, both both their league team and their challengers team are both going to be filled with Saudi-only players, at least for the time being. So it doesn't actually add any spots for them for development or, or anything of that such. Um, That's my position on it anyway. Like, a lot of players talk about getting chances or stuff like that. Like, the people... like the chances are like you know I mean, unfortunately unfortunately it, a company that you know didn't fork up enough bread falcons did they want to be a part of it you know give it a year they might have a full na roster but to complain about it saying you feel sorry for people because they like four people are going to lose their spot like congratulations this is what many many people feel that aren't american like, how do you think Wee Man's felt for the past six years? Been like top top challenger AR, not just in the EU, like across the whole world. Can't can't buy a spot. I see what you're saying. Unfortunately, unfortunately, like NA players, a lot of NA players feel very self entitled, mm. and I'll say it as it is. Um, I hear you. I mean, to be fair, I don't. I'm not talking. I'm, maybe I am talking smack. I don't know, but I don't know if Exceed necessarily was the guy. To tweet this out because i don't know if he's getting a spot not, you know he was the guy to not even gonna mention spot. myself is crazy by the way yeah he should have just tweet he should have <laughs> made this tweet without the beginning i feel so bad for challengers have he started it there all good but the fact that he put that in the beginning how do we like, say we're not mentioning myself or mentioning myself and trying to like listen too much uh, too much, too, like, much wire, doing, too much too much wiring in my eyes like if, as Rab would do, if we're reading the yeah. body language of this Always tweet, kind of, if we're reading the body language of this tweet, basically he's saying himself in this entire tweet. <laughs> I, don't th I, I don't think XC necessarily though would be the guy to get picked up, but that's a whole different conversation about what challengers players are even ready to get picked up. I don't think there's... I mean, I rarely agree with Aix, but like Aix did actually make a good point when he said, like, okay, maybe Falcons get slammed, but they're not getting slammed any worse than Exceed and the boys so yeah th you know. that's my point is like they ain't gonna be the best team in the league they might even be dead last but we've had a vegas team that were dead last that got two wins in a season like if they get more wins than two if they get two you know more wins than two <laughs> yeah. they're better than four and a players you know what i'm saying like they, they've yeah. over exceeded expectation so like and we're gonna make it out like exceed like didn't get a shot in the league with lag who were at that point like pretty loaded with money and it still ended up with a 49 rated burger king card like come on now <laughs> i i'm gonna be sh i will be shocked though i, I do want to give like the potential of the other side would it be shocking if they did better than like boston breach this year like at the end of next year falcons actually had a better record than boston let's say they made champs if they make champs like, like if you end up making champs with this squad do you stick or do you just you know do do we expect them to stick or do they just make the run with a superstar roster with Hydra, Scrap, and everyone else they want to get. You know, it, it kind of adds some, some, some question marks to next year as well of like, if they overperform, you know, what happens at that point? What happens at that point? Does Falcons money grab work? Does it actually work out for anyone? So 
don't know. We, we can continue on. We also have this exclusive right here from the Ghost of Hope. Fnatic and Genji are returning to the Call of Duty competitive single Black Ops 6 to replace the Carolina Royal Ravens and Los Angeles Gorillas. Sources also indicate the Boston Breach will be running it back despite poor results and unstable financial backing. This is kind of the only tweet I've seen from this. We've got a, we've got like the confirmation for Vegas, obviously, but I haven't really seen Gen. There hasn't been many more developments on this exactly so, over the last ten days. I mean, there's also other organizations that I know of that also are interested. Um, I don't know whether that's going to happen, but I think that like conversations are being had right now. Um, Gen G would be really cool to have back. Fnatic, obviously, I'd like as well as a UK-based team. I just don't know how much bread they've really got to play with, and also they if they, they they wouldn't they wouldn't do a UK base. Well, exactly, yeah. Like they're a they're a London-based org, but I don't think they're buying Carolina and bringing it back to London. Really, maybe they would, but I'm not sure. The United Kingdom fanatics, like that'd be pretty good. The UK fanatics. Pretty dead, not gonna lie. I mean, we could do <laughs> London. I, 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 <laughs> I we gonna do the United Kingdom, bro. I don't even make any bro, sense. You see, you see, the thing is, though, a lot of the best UK players that were in challenges are starting to retire because there's just no, like, no way of them getting into it now. They're just wasting their time doing it because they're not getting paid for it. Like, Wee Man, he's retired now. Like, he's done for. But, yeah. Jesus. I don't yeah, know, it's it, tough, it? We may have saw, we may have seen Coach Bands. I don't know. I saw the teaser with the band stuff. I don't know what the situation yeah. is there. Might see Coach Bands happening. So uh, a lot of the guys I think are just moving on to better things, which is unfortunate because there's so much talent there that we'll never see you, what happens if they're in the league. You'll all be pleased to know no one has hit me up for a coaching spot yet. So <laughs> you'll all be pleased to know that. Hit a hit a quick retweet retweet on that tweet. It might be about time. People, you know, you hit it right at EWC. There's a lot of commotion going on. You know, a lot of this and that, and a little retweet on that thing and let people know. But that's right. Teams want to continue to suck. It's fine. I'll watch from the outside. The, I, I'm just gonna say this fanatics Gen G thing. We haven't. I, is it true? Is it not true? I guess we'll find out. But we haven't seen any confirmation yet. At least from my end, as an insider, people I'm talking to, no one's heard a full confirmation that Fanatics and Genji are in these spots. Boston Breach, though, from what I know, Breach seems like they're going to be back. From what I know, they're going to be back on a smaller scale and continuing. So that's, that's what I can give everyone here, that Breach is going to continue on for a little bit longer. Um, I just don't want another bloody Poverty Orc, bro. Like, we're getting rid of the Poverty Orcs, and then I don't want Boston just to become another Gorillas and just waste their time. But you like, always, Don't you always need one, though? Yeah, but like at least Boston, even though they would form shit teams, they tried and they run events. The issue is if they're scaling down operations, there's probably going to be no Boston event. I love it in Boston. It's a great city. But I don't want to go in January. So if you are running it back, Boston, run an event, but do it, at a, do it not in the dead they're, of winter. They're, listen, they're going to be one of these. Listen, in every situation, in every league there is, there's always going to be a poverty org. There's always going to be the guy. There's always going to be the org that is a stepping stone to the bigger fish. Right. Right, right. Boston, unfortunately, are now going to be one of those teams. They're scaling down, like Ace said, which means, guess what? You ain't going there for a decent salary. You're probably going to get you're going to get half lowered or whatever like that. I doubt there's going to be any events. I think something's obviously gone down there where they're not happy. I think genuinely, that team last year probably didn't help anything, you know, in in the aspect of that. So unfortunately, I think they will be the the, the poverty org. Yeah, it's not it's not looking too too good for Boston, but I think at least if we can have a spot where it, uh, challenges players rotate in and out of, get their opportunities, get their chances, like you said, it, it might be it might be the stepping stone into some better teams and better opportunities. If even if they keep the roster that they had from EWC, something like it, some form of it, let's say Cami, Awakening, Snoopy, and one. I think that could be a good, you know, that could be good for Cam. That could be good for Awakening. These guys who are kind of right in the middle of being out of the league, but still the potential, the possibility. And I mean, I mean Joe Awakening showed a lot of promise. At EWC, he was frying. So, you know, I definitely want to see some guys. We need one poverty org at least to bring in some new, some talent and and filter some people in and out. That's what I think. Um, but we do have some a lot of a lot of developments in terms of new players. These FAs. Um, one that we saw is fellow restricted FA for Black Ops 6. If you're interested in building something, hit my line. 
Carolina blowing it up. Seems it seems like a lot of players are, are are gone. Looks like they're. Do we think Fellow finds a landing spot on a team, or do we think we fear he's cooked? This is a classic London. They don't re-sign you because you have a better salary in your second year, and they'll get him back. Uh, that's you, that's the reason he's restricted. Well, the, the, they have. I mean. But the thing is, they've let him go, no? I mean, if he's restricted free agent, are they not saying, like... It doesn't guarantee he's going to go, but it, it says that they could just let him go from his contract and allow him to go somewhere else for free, but they're going to keep paying him. If he's restricted, they're, gonna, they're still they're, paying they're, him. They're, they're going to try and sell him, though. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. They're going to try and, and sell they, him for, like, uh, a couple of weeks, and then when they don't, they're going to let him go for free. They're going to yeah. let him go and then probably resign him for lower. That's, that's, the, that's the messed up part, too, man. The messed up part is a lot of these. Like, guys... Will they resign him? I don't know. Like, or do you bring Clay back at this point? No, they no. Don't... Like him being restricted now means they've definitely triggered his option, so they're going to pay him like a few more months. See if they can sell him off. If not, they'll they'll sack him off and buy someone. They'll they'll they'll, they'll sign someone for less. Exactly. It's, it's the classic. It's the classic. You know. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. I business, just don't but see fellow really being able to walk into another team. Like, was, I just think there's too few spots out there. I don't know if you're Ravens, what you think of Because he was good this year on land, but, yeah. like, I don't know if I'm taking him over many other options in that position. Obviously, they're keeping Gwyn. Like, they've made that pretty clear. Tej getting, like, fully released was a, was a surprise. Because um, it's like, surely... I think Bean's probably signed a contract where he was always going to be a full free agent. But... The fact that they've let Tej go for free and they want to buy out for Fellow, I'm like, hang on, the maths ain't math in here. Because ARs are always in lower demand than SMGs. If there's either of those two, you're actually going to get a buyout for it, would be Tej, you'd think, wouldn't it? Uh, I mean, unless I mean, tripping. To be fair, I do think, I do think not just because Revive, or Revive says Saint confirmed this, but I'm pretty sure he's going to win your he signed a one-year deal. Okay, wow. Tej actually cooked Ravens, bro. Wow. Tej is smarter than I thought. <laughs> Fat what about one Ravens, zero. Wait, wait, what about Ravens were licking their lips at that deal? They said, fucking hell, no one plus one option. Fuck yeah, sign me up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think realistically Tej does end up on a, on, a, on a decent top eight team, I think, for next year. Um, where exactly? I don't know. But I do think he ends up on a, on a squad. He, he performed well this year consistently. You know, maybe didn't show up necessarily at the end of the year per se, but throughout the year online and stuff, I think, I think Tej deserves a spot in the league hundred percent. Tej back to Boston, PD. Don't wish that on anybody. Don't you dare wish that on anybody. Nobody wants to be back in Boston, bro. Yeah. Um, this is a little bit of an interesting one. Your guy, hey Rev, your fucking guy. Bro, I can't believe I actually spoke this into existence, man. Like. When Rencore. I mentioned Rencore earlier in the year, like, respectfully, I was almost taking the piss because while he was a kind of notable Spanish player, he was one of those players that, like, I don't think he'd really had a great season before this one, really. Like, he was kind of a notable, like, maybe seventh, eighth best Spanish player or whatever, like, on that kind of team. So, but I used to mention him, and then all of a sudden, he actually had a really good year. So, I don't know. I feel like I... I made this happen on some level. You brought his name up. His name got back in the mix. Honestly, I'm a little surprised they didn't take Super just because when I was watching from the little matches I would watch and stuff, I thought Super oh, was both like, of them. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think for the slot with their team, with I think Lucky's the only one that you need to replace. They probably have their eyes on Super still, like for next year. But I thought it would be Super for Lucky. I thought that was the natural transition here. But I guess the team thought otherwise, and they thought Rencore would be the guy for them. Um, well, they've replaced in Vickle, according to rumors, huh? Yeah, rumors say Vickle's the one who's going to be swapped out, and that's a little shocking to me because I thought Vickle, for most of the year, had a pretty good year. I thought he was really their foundational player. So it's it's a little bit of a shock to me, to be honest. But I, maybe that's just what Heretics thought Vickle was the issue. Maybe towards the end of the year, maybe recency bias for them. I'm a little shocked, personally. Uh, Trey, I know you're the, you know, you're the Miami Heretics' number one fan. You run their fan account. But... From what you think, you know, what is your thoughts on this move? You get some more EU representation in the league again. We'll put it like that. What are your thoughts? Gonna be the same same thing, really. <laughs> <laughs> if we're being honest, 
Is it? Uh, what, another Spanish player joining a full team of Spanish? Yeah, it's, you know, Spanish cod. He's a handsome, <laughs> he's a, he's a handsome lad, though, ain't he? They're all fucking good looking. That's not the point. Bring some fucking aura to the league. We need we need some we need some Trey Cartier, Rab Ace aura in the league, bro. I mean, I'm not gassing myself up on the aura or the motion, but like, it ain't gonna change the fact it's still Spanish cut at the end of the day. You know that it's just in their blood. It's gonna work or it won't work. Black up six, backward sliding. Fuck yeah, looks like it's gonna work. <laughs> but you know, like I I have my opinions on it. Um, <clears throat> I have my opinions on it in terms of, like the way it's played. I still think that it's not the correct way to play. They had that, yeah, they, they had that good stint, but we just saw what happened to him for the last two events. It wasn't pretty. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a little again. I'm a little taken back that they decided if, they, if it is Vickle. I'm. That's the only problem I have with this. Taking out Vickle instead of Lucky, in my opinion, is a wild take. But we'll see how it plays I out. Think Vic was, I think Vic has been their most inconsistent player all year, to be honest with you. Inconsistent? Yes. I mean, I, I think I think kills-wise, yes. I think inconsistent in that term. But making a good play, I think Vic has been the guy who... He's, he's like... He reminds me not of the same play style, but like a, a little bit like a kismet. He's trying to make the, good, the best play. He might get shit on. He might not be having the best map. But he's trying to make the good play and put his... He's playing for the win, basically. Um, but his teammates clearly unfortunately that shit don't ain't matter. fucking good enough yeah that shit does not matter right. apparently I actually clearly. kind of agree with Ace on this though like I actually think Vico is is kind of the player they need on some level I don't know I think without him they might be kind of kind of struggling but maybe I know we, we have this discussion about Kismet alright let's be real he was getting cooked as well and everyone's calling for him to be dropped but because it's Vickel, you guys ain't coming for him to be dropped. Come on now, that's 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 no, pl well, fair play. No, 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 fair, well, uh, fair play, but, but, fair, fair play, fair play. All right, go all right, on. I, 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 have one, I have one line. It's like two lines. Fair play though, but throughout the year, Vickel, if again now outside of play calling that we have to watch because everyone calls me the numbers guy and shit now. Numbers though, Lucky had a worse year than Vickel did. So that's that's just bla on on paper. And it's kind of like the take I was gonna make is that. Like, Pismet's a world champion, <laughs> but, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm back. I'm so back. But, like, he's a world champ, so obviously no one could ever take the dough from him. But in terms of, like, relative performance, Kiz was pretty bad compared to, like, Hydra and, and Sib, especially towards the end of the year. Vickle, I think he had maybe the lowest KD on the team at, like, a 0.92, but the rest of the team was, like, 0 0.93, 0 0.95, 0 0.94. So it's, like, you know... To me, it ain't enough to say he clearly has to you go. You guys talk about like Miami, like, like they were one of the worst teams. They did well this year. The whole Spanish COD thing is something Trey has to keep saying because he doesn't want to be wrong. No, I'm just never wrong. That's that's the big difference here. <laughs> and I mean, their inconsistencies definitely did show throughout the year. So that they did my, they had my, stints my, of, of playing great and then all of a sudden would fall off, but then come back and then play bad. And it was very up and down, to be honest. I mean, what do they have? Like a good. They had like one good event. Uh, was it one good event? I mean, I mean, yeah, they they had a decent run, I guess, in World Major Three. What? Yeah, what do you consider a good event though? Top four, top five, top six, top eight? Uh, you know, what they I'm got a top six one time, didn't they? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, what's a good event technically here? Like a top <laughs> Champs six? Champs is top six, right? It. Yeah, like I out don't of eight know. teams, so uh, typical. Yeah, it's kind of a and hard. Then, yeah. Hard Everyone's saying scrimming to tweet. I'll pop it over right now. Screaming. Here we go. Sources Envoy Hell talks with both LAT and C9. Okay, interesting. Well, I guess it's a good little segue, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I had another FA the thing, but we'll talk strong? about this in a sec. We'll talk what, about this last and we'll go back to the and last to EWC? What's, <laughs> what's strong with that? <laughs> I, I mean... EWZ was was shambolic, but Champs was actually pretty yeah, good. Yeah, High World, what are you saying? The end. Of the but it wasn't pretty. I mean, they beat they beat Surge Game Five Round Eleven after Surge choked it. So maybe it weren't really oh, that dude, good. Dude, High World, your name is saying a lot about. Oh, your Ace right brother, now. we got to stop this. Your name is saying a lot, High World, about your uh, about your takes because they're ass. Okay, listen. Not last, not last but, at Champs. Listen, if you come if you come sick at Champs with eight teams, I'm sorry, that's last to me. 
you're basically last. If, and it, honestly, if you're not if you're not in the top, if you're not in the finals, you're last. I'm not gonna lie. If you're not if you're not third, is pushing it. You're bronze. If you're not in the top three, you're fucking last. You had a horrible event. Unless you're Boston Breach and overperformed absurdly, sure. Maybe if you got a top three at any event, you were overjoyed. But if you're a real competitor, third is not good enough. Second is not. You're trying to win, bro. Sixth out of eight teams is terrible. Envoy. Okay, before we get back to the Illy thing, Envoy holding talks with LAT and C9. Do we think Envoy would be a good fit for those two teams? Rab, Trey? Okay, let's talk Thieves. I think this makes too much sense. I talked about it just after the World Cup that if Toronto are going to blow it up, as it looks like they are going to be blowing it up, then Envoy back to Thieves is just way too sensible because he doesn't fit into Optic, he doesn't fit into Phase. Cloud9 is absolutely a possibility as well. I mean, I think the Hydra and Envoy could absolutely work. I actually really quite like that because people will say, oh, well, Maybe on voice a bit slower, but you got to understand Hydra is literally the biggest do it all we've had in COD since Scump in various ways. So you could put him with Envoy, and that would absolutely be a good duo. Thieves, I think, is maybe slightly more likely. I don't know. It, it depends because I think Thieves were probably quite set that they might well be sticking it out, but all of a sudden, with the developments of the last twenty four hours that we'll get into in a second, with the Sib stuff and the Scrappy stuff and Cloud Nine and Toronto. All of a sudden, that opens the door for thieves because, you know, let's be honest. If you're thieves, yeah, you've done very well at the end of the year. But if you see Scrap and Hydra forming a duo over on Cloud Nine, you gotta think your teammate gonna be good enough to really keep up with that next year. So then you gotta think, is it time to look at Crep? That's what I'd be doing. I talked about it as an upgrade option. If you're looking at anyone to upgrade, it'll probably be Kremp. If Envoy, world champ with Thieves, was to come back in alongside Joda Sieves, would maybe Nasty, if you can upgrade him, maybe you do. And Ghosty, I mean, imagine you've got like Ghosty, Sib, Ghosty, Envoy, Sib, Envoy. and Joda Sieves or something like that. That's disgusting. That's a disgusting team. That's, that's, Sign I'm, me up. I'm, I'm a fan. I do think after the year that the LAT ended at, considering their champs run and EWC run, they're, I think they're going to want to keep at least two, maybe three of their players. Ah, you can always pack a punch, man. I don't know. I think I, I think they're going to – I think with that kind of closing of a year, you might want to stick out with that development. That's a huge development Listen, from the start of the got, year to the you end got, of the year. You've got Envoy and Sib out there in the world right now that you can put on your team to make it better. you got to take those. Bro, let me – wait. Let me cook on one thing. Just – hey, C9. What are we doing though? Realistically, what are we doing? Why would oh, we it's put like up? Why would we it's put like up Sib? Why would we put up Sib for, for to even put him out in the market when he's arguably, not even arguably, he's your second best player the whole year. I don't understand why you would put such a talent into the market off of your team when he arguably you could talk about a champs. If y'all won. He probably should have got MVP if you guys won champs. So I'm dumbfounded, mind blown, pissed that this is the decision making. And yet, I don't have we seen a restricted FA on Kismet or Caesar yet? Any tweets? I don't see one. Why not? They were clearly okay. holding the squad back. But Sib is the one getting the short end of the stick. Beyond me, guys. If, if we're, Bring if, up the Sib tweet and then let Trey give his. I mean, I mean, low key, they've probably already been told, but Sib's like the only one that's probably because the same happened with Ultra. They've been told, but not everyone's tweeted. That, I, that's why I'm curious though. That's why I'm curious though, because if 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 I only see a Dante tweet and there's nothing else, and we don't see Caesar or Kismet being forced to test the market or or testing the market. This might go down as the worst roster move, the worst roster decision in CDL era. For nah, sure. Nah, because I think you're I think you're faded for that take purely based on the fact we know it's not performance based. Exactly. So we're putting so we're putting we're putting feelings over facts. We're putting numbers. Well, yeah, because we're putting clearly, uh, they're, a they're, winning they're, maps over what fr friendship league cheese. Is that what we're going back to? I mean, it's just going to decline, though. If people don't want to team with each other, it's just going to decline. Performance is going to decline. There's no point in put. There's no point in forcing people to play with someone they don't want to play with. 
I literally told you this at EWC too. No, I understand. Mm -hmm. I understand, but it's just it's it's so, some talent, some version of talent is undeniable, right? Siv is one of those guys that's undeniable. Whether you like him or don't, whether you like his personality or don't, like on the outside looking if in, you whatever. You can't sit there and play with someone. You can't play with someone. It's that you can't force people to play with someone if they don't like a person. At the expense, like, at the expense of your team getting worse, though. They ain't gonna win if they see if they ain't gonna win if they don't want to play with him. There's literally like just because he's talented. I'm not. I'm strictly speaking from someone who has played with someone that doesn't want to, that doesn't want to play with him. It's impossible to win that way. I don't know. I, I do understand. Obviously, you're a player. You played, so I do. Un your sentiment does matter uh, way more than mine does. But in terms of straight talent level and what this team needed, and if they and if they don't end up getting scrapped too, which is gonna be very, I mean, very tough, whether they do their best or not. If they don't end up getting scrapped, and this is the situation they put themselves in, and Dante, even if he goes to another team, terrible for them. If he does stay on the team, how you know? Think about how defeated he must feel after getting you to a grand finals at champs playing arguably the best and now being forced to do this i think if that's you, if, stupid plainly dumb if you if you are my honest opinion i see sib going to toronto for scrapping a trade and extra money on top toronto sound like the type of author would take that deal that's the interesting yeah. thing if scrap if scrap is definitely out which again if the team's blowing it up i think the only reason they would do so is scrap saying something about it like their star you know he's the, the foundation of that whole entire team i'm gonna be honest i'll keep it a buck i might get roasted but we'll see next year because all my long-term takes are always correct trey has every take i have my long-term takes scrap and hydra are not gonna they're if they keep caesar and kismet with scrap and hydra you're building this essentially the same team with a guy who's a little bit more consistent throughout the year, who actually fell off closer to the end of the year a little bit, but you're building the same team. What the, the, the problem with the team wasn't Sib. The problem with the team in terms of your gut, your play, your maps, was the other two who are sitting there happily twiddling their thumbs, fucking slapping, slapping cheeks and twerking for Hydra because... The only team, the friendship league is winning on this case. I think it's terrible. I, think I it's mean, horrible. there was just a tweet. There was just a tweet part that always held talks with C9. Who do you reckon that's for, Ace? Hold, held talk again. Scrimmentel has been wrong before. I will keep that out there factually. I've read his tweets before. Yeah, he's been wrong before. Listen, I can assure you that they will try and make a change for Kizme. I can assure you that. I hope so. How about that? I hope. I hope so. Not, and that's not preying on downfall for Kiz. But if we're going to throw Dante into the pack, into the weeds, it's absurd if he's the only one getting tossed out. Then it would just be, I don't know, terrible decision-making on, yeah, I mean, on, on an org standpoint, on a team basis. Sure, we're friends. We're going to keep the friends. We won champs together. This guy was the odd man out. Odd man out problem. I get that. Fine. But on an organizational basis, C9, if you're committed to winning, dropping the guy, this guy is just brain dead. Straight, it's just brain dead. Yeah, but at that point, are you dropping three players or one player? You, hey, you're Mr. Two-Man Change yourself. You're yeah, Mr. No, you're Mr. Mr. Two-Man Change. They're, they're going to make a two-man change. All right. All right. Time will tell. We, we, every, everyone knows they're going to make a two-man change. But, but, but the truth it. is, if they're actually trying to get Scrappy, because that was another tweet that Ronnie did, basically saying like, they're going to try and give it their all to get scrap onto this roster. And also, I think I would have interesting questions there on how that looks from a chemistry perspective too, just because it's just very strange to imagine that they didn't get along especially well with Sib for most of the year. And probably that comes from both sides. Like if Sib recognized that was happening and it was affecting their play, it's also on him to some level to help resolve that. Obviously, scrap is kind of, you know, the MVP candidate who's there every single time with a 99 overall. But if you're going to get Scrap, is Scrap going to come in and be like, oh yeah, Kismet, my guy. Like, you know, if you're going to put the money in for Scrap, you probably better be putting the money in to upgrade everywhere, right? Um, it also raises the question of whether Skies is the right man to stay, although I, I actually don't mind that. I think if you've got Scrappy in, Skies probably isn't a terrible partner, but I don't like, I'd almost prefer insight, you know? 
I'd kind of want to Ab bring that along. Absolutely, absolutely. If you could upgrade... Listen, these motherfuckers got to start moving. If you could upgrade, though, for Insight, Scrap, Hydra, Envoy, now we're talking a squad. Now I'm I'm all about it. Okay, you got rid of Sib. Okay, I still hate the, I still hate the move, but at least you built something that's still commendable, tippable, can take you far. Good names, big names. But I mean, that doesn't really change anything, though. It that's the thing, though. That's exactly what I was getting to. But at the end of the day, that team doesn't necessarily sound like it's gonna beat Optic or Phase. First off, secondly, wherever Dante does end up, he's making them way better. Like he's he's becoming your competition immediately by going to a different team. I don't ah, know. Scrapping, like scrapping, scrapping Hydra in the same team, like has the chance to be Optic and Phase if they, you know, if if they make the envoy swap too or whatever like that. Yeah. Scrapping Hydra in the same team, uh, as much as uh, Sib is very talented, but Scrap is just better in 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 every aspect in P my opinion pd i love you but please don't throw skies in this bro scrap hydra and skies are beating optic dog don't throw skies in this mix don't don't throw scrap and hydra and then add skies to that bunch like like you just cooked no you did not cook promise what you. what i want is scrap like hydra and uh octane coming out of retirement <laughs> I want that little trio because that would up, be. Rev. I might be the best trio. I'm. I'm doing for real. If Octane got the call, like, what does he think? If if uh, or maybe Trey Zero. I don't know. Like, I'm. I'm looking at that as a. As nah, I saw someone sliding trio. backwards, bro. I'm out. Yeah, they, yeah. I, I was mad. <laughs> to be fair, Octane probably thinks the same thing. But the other question is, I mean, we can go to some of the the stuff that. Yeah, we can talk of the early thing, but. I guess the other point is that if you see Scrap and Hydra potentially about to be formed, if you're Optic and Phase, you might have to think about whether you uh, allow that to happen, I guess. But like, well, the, Illy thing Illy. Does, uh, the, the Illy thing doesn't even excite me, if I'm being honest with you. Yeah, it's kind of lost. It's lost its, its like taste, you know, it's lost its flavor. He treats the shit every year, bro. He's still right, bagging listen, it. And, and, like until, and, until I see Illy, and I love Illy. I, he knows this. Everyone, like I, I've spoke to him before. Like you know, I'm friendly with him. You got to complete a full season. Is it three think, years in a row now? Yeah. Like we got to lock it in. You, you, he could definitely oh. come back and prove everyone wrong, but the evidence is not in his favor here. It's definitely not in his favor. I think uh, I, I think realistically, if he comes back, though, what landing spot do we see for him? Possibly, Rab, anything? That's the tough one, isn't it? It's like, Illy is a team that, if you're in an ideal world, Illy will be thinking, oh, maybe Thieves will be thinking about me. And obviously, Surge or another team that's kind of in that ballpark and maybe needs another AR alongside a Boozer, right? Because they've you know, got rid of everyone. Brezzy's gone. Hook has gone, surprisingly, maybe. Um and they've got 04 and a boozer over there. So maybe that could make sense. But he's not going to go over to Surge. Rambo isn't going to take him back. Let's right. be real. Right. So, <laughs> you know, th then you're looking further down the list, aren't you? Um, but at that point, it gets a bit problematic. I do think he'll get a spot. I, I think the pros... Listen, he, he, he's going to walk into the league. Let's be honest. He's going to walk in. He has enough benefit of doubt among the players still, yeah. I don't see... No, way. Actually, th this I'm actually doubting for the first time ever. I'm doubting the fact that Illy can get come into the league this year with two teams that are fully locked. You know, the Heretics with Spanish players uh, and then now the Saudi team. There's two teams that are fully locked. The only team I think that is like a super open door, yeah, if he walks into the league, would be like a Boston. But would Illy go and play for the men at Boston? I don't know if he would do that himself. I think this is the first time that we actually see where Illy's potential in the league because of the last couple of years of what it's turned out to be aren't actually there the prospects aren't actually there for the first time i promise you he just walks into the league on a spot he doesn't care where he goes he'll just perform he's gonna use it as a stepping stone he doesn't really have the leeway or the you know he doesn't have any say in what right now where he goes because he hasn't completed a full season in three years right right yeah it's a little you know, this it's, isn't like it's a, a little bit this isn't it's like a situation it's not like a situation where he goes no nah, i'm not playing for this team like Nah, I'm not doing it. Like, but personal the guy pride. Didn't even, personal it, pride. You know what I'm saying? I'm worried about personal pride here. And again, other thing, we have a lot of people on the sidelines, right? We still have Austin. We have Slasher sitting on the sidelines. We have a, a free agent attached now. 
who if you if he absolutely needed to go somewhere as a flex, he could. You know, he's playing main, obviously, but he could go as a flex if he needed to. Like, there's a lot of guys sitting on this. Even, let's say, Nasty, for example, gets dropped. Nasty had an amazing year, right? Now you, now he's competing with Nasty, for example. I think this is a really tough – this is going to be a really tough year for Ilya, like, to try to waltz his, back, waltz his way back in. We might even see Illy in challengers if it's not on Boston or, or like one of the worst. If Illy didn't Illy. play challengers, if Illy didn't play challengers, well, when he got dropped, he ain't playing challengers. I promise you, Illy gets a team. Promise you. I might go to Warzone, bro. No, I think I think it's more likely he gets a team. But also, even mentioning in chat, Priest is available and out there and kind oh, of. Like, you also got a think as well. Priest is there. Got think as well. World champ, bro. Illy major one. Illy major one peak was better than most of the people that got dropped the whole year. Illy's, yeah, peaking, Illy's right? major one peak was top five player in the league at that point. I'm like, like, no BS. His major one peak was top five player in the league. We didn't see much more than that, but he was insane major one, to be fair. To be fair. Um, yeah, I guess me and the boys can test a little bit about where, where we see Illy, but I'm excited if he does get on a team to see what the first month of his gameplay is like. If he makes it to month three, he might be back. He might actually be back. <laughs> Um, we saw this too, Mr. Trey Zero. You got any intel for us on, on what's going on here? I, I actually don't. I haven't, spoke, I haven't spoke to him. I can only assume that he's just going to be coaching from or something like that, or he's going to be joining in some aspect. Um, um, yeah, because, oh. like, I don't know. I don't think they're going to bring him back as a player yeah. when they're starting team. I think it might be possible if they're forming like an academy team. team or a substitute spot. That would make a lot of sense. I mean, I could find out in like two seconds, but I'd rather fun not, to guess, you know? isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in my mind, it seems most most sensible, at least, considering Bands didn't have the greatest finish of the year with Gentle, Gentle Mates. Like, he, he did get a little bit fried. It does make sense to me. Maybe at EWC, some conversations were had. He was talking to the boys, the Toronto guys. I think him coming on as a coach, considering his experience with that organization, I'm sure he's close to a lot of those guys, too, uh, would make a lot of sense. With a coach, he's got to sort that nose out, though. Wow! Holy shit! Well, damn, bro! Like we we coming at next like that? That's my boy, but like damn, that's a nose. You know what I'm saying? That is a nose. <laughs> nose. Yo, we're toxic on the show. We're talking cod, and all of a sudden he gets a stray for his fucking his fucking beak, bro. Insane. But yeah, I think I would guess best guess would be coach. Otherwise, I think we'd see something about a conversation about him talks with the team. Some type of intel tweet would come. Bance is replacing Envoy or something like that. We'd get something like that. Unless, this is my only alternative. Tell me what you guys think about this alternative. Unless Toronto realizes it's kind of chalked and they're going for a rebuild year. Potential? Thoughts? Yes or no? Maybe? Trey's looking like hell now. Nah. But if you're going to lose Envoy, you're going to lose Scrap. Insight probably is going to go. Is it, Would you just get a little bit of a of a... Of a Rebuild team for the time being instead of paying out the bag to players when there's not really that many great free agents out there. The salary is going to go down anyway. R exactly. I'm saying. So why do you, why do you need a rebuild year when you're ultra, who also just got their money back for the spot they didn't pay for? Uh, I'm more saying the the team to build right now isn't really there. You know the highest potential players are going are not really sitting there yet. Next year they will be. So for this year I'm saying potentially a rebuild squad could make sense. I mean, or no one buys out the Ultra Boys and they just run it back. I think there's like 0% chance they run it back right now. Uh, I'm kind of on the same boat. According to what Scrappy's saying. Yeah, say, run it back with the same exact team? I don't see that happening. Scrappy I mean, also basically said it last night on stream as well. I just don't see them picking up like a... I don't think Sans is coming you. back into the... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. If I'm Toronto, it's an interesting spot if you do lose, like, the whole team. Because then you're thinking about, well, how about TJ? How about Benjamin Beans? Like, these type of guys to bring into Toronto, which I don't think is a bad idea either. I think if you are Toronto and you are losing those guys, or you're... I mean, losing is a strange term because they have the choice of what they do. But knowing Toronto, they might pull the trigger this year on cashing in on some of the contracts they have available. They need to try and get Sib as a replacement, but I don't know. It's the biggest replacement Pete's they can get. 
There's also this, um, speaking of Zib, uh, Ben J assumes Sib has been dropped due to disagreements during practice and that Scraps is the only logical placement. Let's hear what our EWC co-host has to say. Okay, they picked up a new player. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Is that is that where you're going with it? You think that's what the problem is? You think well, I mean, because I of all they, that, they're making changes? I think they're making changes because it was clear they're one of the ARs had to go. Um, And if there's a big disagreement, it's a 3v1 versus Dante, even on teams like that. You know what I'm saying? Or you've seen people in situations like that. If it's one of those situations where we all can't get on the same page, you're on the opposite side of it. Yeah, I don't think really I don't, you said it was clear that that one of these guys had to go. I don't know if it was as clear as you're making it out to be. Well, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think? What do you think they should? I mean, I don't know. It depends up. who they're get. Depends what they're planning. I don't know where where they're going with it. Okay. I but I have to see where they're going with it before I say anything. You know what well, I mean? I mean, I, I just think like they were. I, I recorded a video this morning. I mean, listen, they if they're out. dropping Dante, they're making big moves. Right, they're trying to. They're trying to. They're trying to do something. Well, they're doing something here. If they're I mean, if they're dropping they Dante, try and get scrap right. If you're gonna replace That's the only one I can think of if they're even trying to make a change. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think anything's said in this necessarily. Disagreements during practice, maybe, I mean, maybe that's something new, but getting scrap, if you're gonna drop Dante, the only logical person above that is scrap. It doesn't make any less, it doesn't make sense beyond that. If you're, if you're dropping Sib, there's, there's no one else in the league that I would take over him for the role he's playing, to be honest. Ben Jay's a fed, but he might be a fed. Who knows? But I mean, you know, <laughs> it's the classic, you know, and like maybe this happened, you know, it, it probably happened. <laughs> <laughs> it, pro <laughs> it probably happened. Yeah, um, I mean, it is some hearsay, but I'm, uh, Ben Jay's one of those guys who likes to, he likes to slowly plant seeds of info that he does know. So I'm, I'm going to assume that some, he's hearing this from somewhere or something. Or something down the great grapevine is getting to him that he's I mean, you can like see this. it on the camera. You can see it everywhere like that. Like, Sib isn't the same as the other three. Like, he just ain't. Um, yeah. You can see it on camera, how they move around and stuff like that. Like, they might respect each other as players, but they ain't the same people. They don't work together. Like, that's just how it is. Sib might have a different way of how he wants to play compared to how Skies wants to play and it just ain't meshing and you can clearly see like they've had their ups and downs this year and you know they sit they, they've seen it before and you know he, Sib's not a bad player whatsoever but did he fit their system probably not um in my opinion they were one of the worst hardpoint teams for you know three quarters of the year then they became um, the best hardpoint team out of nowhere which was kind of crazy to see yeah yeah um, it, they flipped that insanely. It's kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, here, but, here, are, here are his cards, by the way. Because I know someone in chat, who do you say? He's mid. Uh, Shotzi the Gamer, my brother. The, these are not mid. I'm sorry. Look at the numbers. In SND, he had, he had a struggle year, which Dante's SND game is, is up and down. Uh, a little inconsistent. But in terms of hard point, in terms of respawns, Dante's been is doing the same thing he was doing, you know, in Vanguard and in the last couple of years. He's playing lights out when it comes to response consistent the end of the year he was especially good as well like this considers the whole season but i i if you just had like major three four champs ewc major four champs ewc like it would these would be in the 90s yes um for sure but yeah if you consider the, the latter half of the year he definitely as i mean not just him though realistically as a team they got a lot better it wasn't just him he got he got better he got more comfortable but their whole team was functioning just really well towards the end of the year um we saw this which is interesting that they're kind of blowing it up right because in the sense that it was understandable at the start of the year that there were going to be some integration questions but the fact that he played really well at the end of the year and they played their best card i mean they won major four grand finals of champs yeah ewc wasn't as good but the fact that it was still problematic behind the scenes and they still did pretty well is kind of commendable but at the same time it's just cloud nine doing weird stuff and they always do weird roster stuff as an organization. So I'm not surprised they're coming into card and they're doing weird roster stuff. But arguably it would have happened anyway, even if it was still the New York subliners. Is it, is it interesting too that they, they made that big announcement of all uh, the guy goes on Reddit, all our players are re-signed. Like with like super pride and like we're we're but this is how it goes. You can never back, trust baby. them, man. Well, it's it's not like he was lying, right? Like Jack Etienne, the founder, whatever, he went on Reddit and he said that 
we're back in COD. We're re-signing all of our players. We're picking up all the all the contracts. Obviously, everyone reads that and says, oh, they're keeping the team together. But that's not actually what it says. It says they're picking up the contracts, not that they won't try and sell one of those players or two of those players or whatever. Or everybody. Uh, which is, oh, I know. Look at the old well, team. You'd, like... be, <clears throat> you'd be stupid not to re-sign them, though, because someone's going to buy them from you. Like, any of exactly, those players. Exactly, makes sense. Some, any, any of those players someone's putting up a fee for. Like, let's be real. If it's Sib, you know, it could be like a... I mean, you can look at it weird, Ace, but like we just talked about pretty much three world champions a year ago. Someone's putting up a small fee. Someone could put up a big fee for Sib, and someone's going to put up a small fee for Kismet if they really want him. Kismet makes another Kismet makes another team better for like, you know, even if they want to pay 50k for him, it's still 50k they save. Mm, I see what you're saying. You know, all four of them are worth some money. Regardless if it's kids for fifty k or Hydra for one point five million, like so, like someone someone's paying something for. Him. Yeah, I mean it, it helps it helps balance out the books. But I bet at the end of the year, if anyone gets gets bought up, um, but yeah, CDL's Grimintel, all of Ultra are restricted free agents. I'm now remember this doesn't mean they all have they all they all leave. Similar happened last season. So yeah, I mean this was Grimintel recently. I'm not gonna lie, he has been cooking. He has been cooking. Even when I say he, sometimes he's been wrong, but recently he's been on fire. Um, and I then, think he's only ever been wrong one time, to be honest with you. Is it ever? Obviously not ever. I, I don't know, yeah, about six yeah. years ago. But like this this but, season, I'm pretty sure he's only been wrong like once. And that wasn't even his fault. Yeah, he's. I mean, I was like, yeah, there's some that he wasn't wrong about. But there's some rumors he kind of sh overshot too soon. That's what I'll say. Like some rumors he put out a little too soon before they... But this is this is the way that he operates. Like Crone always wants to be right. Ronnie's like, ah, if we can't have people, fuck it, let's send it. <laughs> and uh, I I got a problem with that personally. But like, um, you know, Ronnie will be wrong occasionally on things just because things change. Um, but this was very interesting, I thought, from from Adam Adamu because last year, so Jake Hell's tweet basically says they did the same thing. All of them were told that they're restricted free agents. Insight clearly believed on some level that, you know, he's going to be gone. So why not look at the options right about now? Whereas the other guys kept that information more private. And now we've got their co-founder and CEO effectively saying like, yeah, this is true, at least on some level. Because if it wasn't true, you know, he would deny it. And I think last year he basically denied that there was too much going on. And there was things happening behind the scenes last year at Toronto. But of course, eventually they did decide to run it back. It's just a very strange thing about the way that Toronto is run as an organization. And that it never really feels like the players have much say as to what actually goes on with their roster. It just seems like the management team and the coaches, they're the ones that really make the calls. And um, now we've got officially Adam saying, yeah, everything is possible here. At the point that Ben was making was that Scrappy's contract has one more year on it. Is Scrap going to still be on Toronto at the end of the next season? I mean, we've speculated on this on the show before mm -hmm. that Optic might try and get him, FaZe might try and get him, right? So do you want to allow scrap you've had two great years with him on the roster one event in both seasons come close to winning champs on both occasions do you want to go one more year with a similar roster or the same roster that's probably going to have similar success to the last year or so and then let scrap go for free or do you want to say okay we've got scrap under contract we can sell him now for a you know a serious payday now you might argue they don't need the payday because they've just got the refund from the league and maybe that's fair enough, but, you know, money does always talk, so it is what it is. Uh, I think I think if you try to sell him now, if he's already, if you already know he's kind of bound to leave, which just through personal, I don't know, the way Scrap moves, the way he gets into the social stuff, the way who he's talking to, who he's close to, I think it makes sense that he's obviously trying to leave Toronto at some point to go one to one of the biggest orgs in Call of Duty, whether it's FaZe or Optic and whatever team needs him more. Um, I think it does make a lot of sense to try to get your money's worth now. You know, if you can sell him to New York and New York's willing to pay that bag, okay, boys, take him. He's not going to stay. He probably won't stay with us, and he's probably not going to stay with you guys unless he wins. So it's really, a it's really a win for us, and you guys are taking the burden of proof at that point. Like, it's all on C9 at that point. And, we, you know, we, we got a big 500, 400K bag. 
We could pay our players for the year. For, we could pay like pretty much half our salaries for the year. God bless. I'm, I'm actually for it. If, as an owner, business wise, I think Grayson's, you know, he's playing, they're playing this out appropriately. Best way possible. I feel like they also don't care in that aspect of terms like, they know they they know they've got some kind of pool and they know they hold like pretty pretty good players and probably one of the best ARs well the best AR in the league let's just say that like I don't think they're trying to hold them but they know like there's value there you know like they want to get them they, they probably do want to blow it all up and you know get some people gone but they're also not scared to you know do it the way they're doing it like they'd rather hold the players pay them until an offer comes in if it don't. They might just do what, you know, Carolina do. You know what? Like, oh, if we don't get anything for it, you know what? Fuck it. We ain't going to pay you this high contract anymore. We'll go pick someone else up that we want. You know, let's say if they don't come to an agreement with C9, they're probably scraps there for the last year of his contract, you know? Yeah, it, it's, it's a it's a win-win regardless for them. It's either we get one more year of the best, one, the best AR or we get a big payday that can literally fund the next two players basically we get for the entire year. Yeah. So it's a win-win for them in, in all terms. Um, here's from Scraps stream actually actually don't play this there's music in the background we'll just talk about it we'll get demonetized all right this is your bit. clip go ahead i'll let you i'll let you introduce it yeah yeah effectively he doesn't say that much what he does say is he doesn't think it's in, he doesn't think it's possible to keep all the four players in alter next season and then he says it looks like i might be playing somewhere else and he says he kind of knows what's going on, but he's still kind of not sure in the dark to some degree. Does, does he mean that? Um, does he mean that by saying like, do you, in your body language read, does it seem like it's a money problem for Toronto or does it seem like just because of the team itself? I think it's more organizational led than team led. Okay. I, I don't, I don't massively think Scrap would have a problem sticking it out with this team. I just don't think the org wants to do that. And I also think that part of scrap is like you know it maybe it's time to think about moving on as you said earlier like i don't see he's going to be here forever so maybe he's not going to be here now right, right i don't think i don't think they have money issues i just think they're being smarter with it they've had a pretty lackluster year for how much they've spent they won major one and then you know for how for how much they're being paid i'm assuming it's on the top end i i feel like they're probably a bit disappointed in that aspect was it Kleenex who did that tweet with? Yeah, Kleenex and Insight did a tweet. No, the funny. Oh yeah, this one. This was hilarious. I was crying when I read the. I saw this one. Indeed, no, it was not. It was indeed not first of many. Like, dude, I was rolling when I saw this tweet. But it's like the the. It's kind of coincidental timing, right? Like, if I look at a tweet from, for example, the way that Bantz tweets, he's always a little bit tongue in cheek. Yeah. Like you can never. There's some players that you can never fully read into exactly what they're thinking or whether they're baiting or not or whatever, right? Whereas when Kleenex is talking, it's like, you've got to take it serious. Like Kleenex ain't just messing around for impressions, right? <laughs> and the time that he tweeted this being just as all this roster drama is happening on the timeline, like it's got to make you think that there's something going on here and even insight replies to it and the insight reply is like okay whatever maybe there's some impression farming but i think that kleenex tweeting this as he did when he did gotta you gotta think that that team ain't long for this world yeah i think that yeah when, when you when you have him saying this he's not a very outspoken guy there's some truth to the, all these rumors and everything that's happening we probably won't see them see this same team trying to run it back together another year just because, you know, they're all, everyone individually is talking about how it's kind of chalked, to be honest. I mean, cool. I mean, Cooley makes a good point too, saying that Scrap sounded sad. You know, he's got, his girl lives in Toronto. Wherever he goes, he's going to have to move away. Like it is, it, it, that's, that's the life of the competitor, you know, and it is like a sad thing to think about because he probably sees him, he probably sees it as he would, I feel like you look at his options too and, I think the whole like ultra thing being that they didn't have a great year in terms of that. They they won an event, but they, they it was very lackluster for the for the majority of it, and they they're probably not happy with the way it went. And then the, now they're like, right, we're gonna make a change. Like all four people on the same team just clearly ain't working, 
And now <clears throat> I do think C9 are going for scrap. And do I think they're going to get scrap? Yes, I do. He was talking about not being able to smoke anymore, which is interesting to me. Where is huh. Yeah, he was Texas. talking about oh, that too. Andrew, well, I mean, I will say stuff is illegal in Texas. So he may be talking about Texas. I don't know. He also yeah, I mean, funny, it, did, did, did you see that funny video he done with Zuma? Zuma was like, what's your, what, like, what's your options right now? And he was like, well, I've got the keys to Minnesota. <laughs> no, I didn't see that. I didn't see oh, that. It was yeah, no, I, I actually it. saw that a couple hours ago. I'll, yeah. I'll try and f I'll, let me try and find it real quick. That's pretty good. That's um, pretty, let's, I'll I mean, try and find it. We did talk it about was a it was funny as fuck. There, it was is, funny as fuck. This is Scraps overall cards, by the way, and like it's very clear this guy is the best there on the league. It's like without a doubt, man. Online, he struggled a little bit. S and D, he did. That's that's the truth of the matter. But when it came to land time. I mean, okay, KD wise, you struggle, but in terms of impact and getting traded, like. Nah, he's still getting damage per round. I mean, realistically, a one point, uh, he basically has a, a 0.94, a 1.0 KD in SD is not bad. And his overall for the year, his overall on LAN is absurd. This is just. There you, you go. I put it in the chat. You can say whoever you want, whoever you think is the best they are, but. I mean. I just had to make sure that there's no. I had to make sure there was no music. Like just for rab, it's but, his uh, video in it. So it like, it's a, it's a, it's a funny ass clip. Man, our, it's video, so this shit's funny. already demonetized from the first two minutes because you guys, man, it's done. <laughs> Jeez, here it is. It's your like top option right now, like. All right, why is it laggy? There you go. He's also smoking in this clip. Like I got keys to Minnesota. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> oh, you're you're stupid, bro. Oh my god, you were stupid for that. <laughs> oh man, this guy's got jokes, man, huh? Like what's your like top option right now? Like I got keys to Minnesota. I think he smoked a bit too much, to be honest with you. The way he says it too, like he thinks, like he, it's the, it's the off beat, like that beat he pauses is the perfect beat to pause right there. That's phenomenal. Yeah, I know. I mean, scrap. Yeah, scrap's in a in a fun situation, man. I think he, he's just letting the world come to him. Scrap would be in a scrap would be in a way funner situation if he was unrestricted. Oh my god, if he was unrestricted, he's just getting bags from everyone. Any, every, every, everyone is throwing a bag at him. And, but realistically, I mean, if anyone can calculate phaser optic, probably optic, if I had to guess, that's where he's ending up. That's just what it is. I don't think he goes anywhere. I mean, low, I mean, low key, Scrap probably does have the keys to Minnesota. Scrap has the keys to anywhere he wants the keys to, to be honest. Besides, honestly, I say besides New York and optic, phase, like, he, he doesn't have the keys for yeah, those three, but yeah, he still he has, has the, key, the, he has the, the door key. is still open for him. He has the keys to every single org by the top three. Yeah, basically, exactly, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred thousand percent. Um, oh wait, this is the bait. This is why you said the octane thing. I didn't even see this. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm just saying, like, it. The chances are like one in two hundred, but one octane, in two million. Yeah, maybe one in two million. But, it, like, I don't know. If Scrap and Hydra team it up and they need an AR alongside him, you know, I'm I'm thinking about... Also, if I'm Slasher, like, I'm on my hands and knees. Yeah, bro. Like, I got to... Yeah, if I'm sla <laughs> Slasher, Slasher, Octane, Attach... Formal. Imagine. Formal. <laughs> There's so many guys out there that with this, this duo could be so effective and obviously, you know, help out in every department, whether it's just general fundamental game structure or S and D, whatever you need, you know, whatever they, these two feel like they need, if they're together, they have their pickums, bro. They could call up whoever they want. And I'm sure if Octane got the call, shit, we, we might have, we might have the best year of of all time. Black Ops six Octane comes back. Formal comes back. All the goats are coming back. And then three months of the game, like Trey predicts and we all predict is the game's going to be ass and everyone's going to tweet how the game is awful and sliding should be out of the game. It's just it, it, it's it's the, isn't it lovely how COD you works every year? You can see it year? coming. It's no, how COD works every year. It's the cycle, baby. It's the cycle every single year, man. Uh, okay, I mean, this I'm is the question right on now. Scrappy. Are you watching the game? Yeah, I got shots up right now. It's looking good. 
<laughs> the question I have on Scrap, right, is that he's coming through, probably leaving Toronto, maybe going to go to Cloud9. If you are, let's say you're Optic, and you start to see some rumors going around that FaZe are looking at potentially bringing Scrappy into the team. Now, this seems very unlikely, but let's be honest. Will Simp and FaZe have run that thought through their head after Champs? Probably the answer is yes. After Top 6 at Champs, they probably would have thought, well, you know, let's see how it goes at the World Cup. But if it doesn't go so well, can we get Scrap off Ultra? You've got to be thinking about if you can get Scrap off Ultra. Now, it seems like you can get Scrap of Ultra. But if I'm FaZe, I think I stick it out with Draws. You've just won the World Cup, sure. But at the same time, I wouldn't say that it's impossible to consider whether Scrap replacing Draws is an option. So if I'm Optic, who, let's be honest, are quite likely to feel the team with Scrappy over the next couple of years. We've talked about it before that that feels like it probably will happen at some point in the future. Maybe you let him go to Cloud9 to team with Hydra, right? And maybe that's okay because the team they're going to form over there is maybe going to be on par with what you've got going on. But if Scrappy was to go to FaZe, all of a sudden if I'm Optic, I've got to wonder whether I can actually allow that to happen. Um, which I think raises some interesting questions there. Because I don't expect either Optic or FaZe to split. That's why, as you're saying, Trey, it's most likely right now that Scrap ends up on Cloud9. But I wouldn't say that it's completely impossible. Because we've seen this over the last couple of years. Big name player becomes available. And, you know, it sets people's minds working a little bit. If I'm Hex, I'm ca If I'm Hex, yeah. I'm, ca I'm calling... Uh... I'm calling Scrap. I'm calling Ernie, and I'm I'm laying down a, a few lines. A few, uh, I'm being very cryptic, but I'm laying down the law really quick. Like, hey, buddy, don't fuck this up. You know, <laughs> don't fuck this up next year. Lock it in, stay calm, and keep it going. Uh, but we also do have a little bit of news right here from Thank You to PD. But apparently, Trey, you might be back, baby. You might be back. Tweaks have been made. Aim assist type removed. Oh my god, thank the so Lord. So we can get man. everyone on a level playing field. We'll share details soon. AKA That's so good. Why the hell was that even a thing though? No standard, no type. linear, no dynamic. We just got aim assist. The old pros might be back, baby. The old pros might be back. Austin Litigo, your phone is looking hot. <laughs> I'm just saying, baby. Dynamic Dashy, Dashy about to look like the AR we saw. Yeah, several Dashy's years gonna ago. be buzzing about this actually. Yeah, but I guarantee it's I guarantee it's just dynamic. I mean, as I think everyone being on the same playing field, whatever regardless of what it is, is the best thing. I'm a fan of taking away most settings and keeping people on a standardized game. Some people don't like that. They like to no. manipulate a thousand things and FOV this and like, do a thousand things. I'm not a fan of that. I wish it was just now, old card. If he said we're playing standard aim assist only, I'll be back. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. But I know, I know for a fact they've just made it dynamic aim assist only. Well, that's a debate. To be fair, so I, I'm Jay God right now. says standard they've aim assist. Only assist. So I don't know. I mean, we'll find out tonight because you know if I'm. If I'm missing any bullets, then I need I need a, I need I a nap the aim assist I play. I am I am dying right now. Like, <laughs> not even a red, not even a fucking red bull would save my ass right now. But yeah, I mean, babe, boys and girls, uh, is there any final thoughts before we we wrap up? We talked about I think every roster move, every new FA, restricted, unrestricted. We looked at the preview of Black Ops Six. I think the beta's out now, so everyone is jumping over to the streams and stuff, turning on the game. Final thoughts, boys, before we close it out. Uh, Dope check episode 33. Any final thoughts? Yeah, more to come. I mean, you know, I love this time of year. This is when I'm making that bread. I'm about to hop off this. I'm about to make an F1 video. I'm about to cook up that tomahawk steak. You know how it goes. So I'm going to continue enjoying the time with all the roster stuff happening. Definitely not over yet. There's more to come on this for sure. And obviously... You always get the trickle down effect as well. The top teams decide what they're going to do, and then you know the rest have to figure out what they're going to do as well. I think thieves for me are the real team to watch because 
Nature's been talking, people have been talking, and obviously their results speak for themselves on the fact that they were able to get into that competitive position at the end of the year and arguably were the fourth best team at the end of the year, poss- you know, probably ahead of Toronto, right? Because they beat them twice when it mattered towards the end of the season, certainly at EWC, and they beat them also at the World Championship, trying to beat them back later on. But, you know, they made that statement. So for me, Thieves are the interesting team that might be able to pick up the pieces here. Like, they might be able to capitalize on some of the drama that we're currently seeing and, um, you know, really take a step forward and become back at the upper echelon again. Absolutely. Trey, any final thoughts before we close out, baby? I'm, I'm intrigued to see what it's... <laughs> I'm intrigued to see what's going to happen for the offseason because, like I said, I feel like this is the first year where we've had a bunch of people basically being forced out of a team whilst being under contract. Mm, yeah, that's true. Um, I think this is the first time we're going to see a bunch of people. Because, um, what you know, let's just say, like, no one wants to pay for Scrappy, like, on a buyout. Like, do Toronto want to cover, you know, let's just say, his fucking his next year's way is like 700,000 for the year. Do they want to cover that and let him go for free? Who knows? You know, it's, a, it's, it's business at the end of the day. It's crazy. So I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm excited to see where roster changes happen. And uh, yeah, basically yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. Basically what we're saying here is that more roster mania, more moves, more solidified trickle down effect. That means more dope checks. That means more rap videos. That means more ACE, more rabbit, and more Trey on your timelines, on Twitch, and on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. We appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in to Dope Check episode 33. We are out. Later, y'all.